Welcome to GNN, a weekly Fallout-themed podcast brought to you by ShoddyCast, makers of Hidden History, The Storyteller, a Fallout lore series, and The Storyteller, Elder Scrolls. I'm your host, Charles Battersby, and with me is my co-host... Austin Horrigan. This has been a pretty big week for Fallout people. So we had a bunch of news drop during our podcast last week, as the PR team at Bethesda always does. Uh, now, in, aside from that, uh, we've got uh, updates to Fallout Shelter. We got the live action trailer. We have a little more uh, of a look at Piper, one of the companions from the game. And of course, this week is the big Fallout sale to honor the anniversary of the Great War in October 23rd, 2077, which hasn't actually happened yet, but it's the anniversary somehow. It's the it's the pre the preversary. The preversary <laughs> of the thing that's happening in 62 years. So let's start with the Fallout Shelter update. Uh, Austin, was was the new stuff enough to get you to play the game again? <laughs> no. <laughs> it wasn't, and I kind of feel... Like, I don't know if that's actually indicative of the update or if it's just... I got I got bored of Fallout Shelter about, like, three weeks into it. I just... I think once I realized that the more you actually played it, like, the more you had it open, the harder the game was... Then I, I stopped playing it as much. I was just like, okay, well, I'll check in every once in a while, and then I'll never get these stupid raids, and then and then I just stopped playing altogether. <laughs> so yeah, no, I've been I've been pretty bad about about picking it up, even for educational purposes. Now, did you uh, play? Did you reach the maximum capacity for your vault population? No, I I was trying to do aggressive expansion, and that's kind of when that's when I uh, that's when I stopped getting interested. All right, well, I, I did reinstall it and played a little bit of it, and uh, one of the cool new features they've installed is a, a cloud save system, uh, which... Oh, good. Yeah, I mean, that, that would have been great if they'd had it a month ago when I erased the game from my, uh, uh, <laughs> my phone and then reinstalled it uh, over the weekend to learn that, no, it doesn't save your, your vault's progress um, anywhere after you uninstall I'm, it. And, I'm amazed that they didn't have that sooner because there were some really bad game-breaking bugs that would totally trash your save. Yeah, and especially with all the, the premium content that I purchased yeah. with real-world money dollars and stuff. So <laughs> Now it's gone, yeah. Charles! I, I had two different versions of James in my vault, so I, I'm a little sad <laughs> to see my father die, I guess, like the third time now. Uh, see, I still, have, I still have mine installed, so I guess I should probably hop on there and update it and then Send send the cloud save up there, and then I could never actually play it again, but at least I'd be secure knowing that as long as the servers are there, <laughs> my money is safe. Then one day the servers will shut down, and everyone will, will talk about, uh, oh, Fallout Shelter was so awesome when it ran back when we had iPhones, and now it's gone. <laughs> That's how it always is with the big MMO when they shut down the servers. Everyone gets all weepy. It's like, my City of Heroes character is gone forever. <laughs> all right, so uh, one of the things that uh, you get in the new update is uh, you get to have Piper from Fallout 4 show up in your game as a premium character, and she's free as soon as you start the game, along with five lunch boxes. Um, so first, uh, you know, I think this is a little bit of a game breaker for people that are just now starting the game because she will show up, you know, right when you get, get your tutorial level, you know, you're going to have a handful of people and then suddenly a level 39 character shows up. Holy cow. Yes, with, with, with a, a bunch of lunch boxes. So it, it's a little bit of a game breaker. I think they should have, you know, made it so that Piper doesn't show up until you reach a certain level in the game. Um, uh, yeah, but it, it is weird. It's like as soon as she showed up, I, I you know popped open those lunch boxes, equipped her with one of the many weapons I now had, and sent her off into the wasteland to go out and harvest stuff. And oh wait, I did that in the middle of the night, so she she's still out there in the wasteland. I should <laughs> I should turn on the game and you know pull her pull her back. Um, um, but you know Piper, uh, aside from getting her in uh, Fallout Shelter, we got a little video of her of what she's going to be like in the game. So uh, so Austin. It, Am I just a creepy pervert for seeing some rampant <laughs> double entendres and innuendo in that little clip that they showed of her? No, she's like, she's like, how do you feel about newspapers? And then at the very end, it's like, why don't you uh, come to my office? I've got like a, 
an article I think you'd be perfect to fill. I mean, perfect to do, do, to do the article, <laughs> do, do, do the article. <laughs> yeah, I, th this kind of came across as like the, the pornographic unofficial parody of Newsies. Yes. Like, yes. I've got your oversized Sunday edition right here, <laughs> ma'am. I can stick it through the mail slot, but I'm not sure it'll fit. And the problem I had with that new, and I'm not sure if it's just the nature of it being like kind of an off-handed promo for Fallout Shelter, but her character seemed to be lounging very comfortably in the uncanny valley. Like just the way she spoke and the way her face was modeled, I found it very like unsettling. Yeah, the the lip syncing of the character. Um, yeah, you, you're right. There there is that weird point where it's like you can see the teeth and the, the lips perfectly defined inside, and it. it uh, you you uh, I had that that same little squick myself. Yeah, I think because she apparently is being set up as a romanceable character, they're trying to make her look as much like a lifelike human female as possible. And they're, you know, they, they did slip into the, the uncanny valley of, you know, the inflatable love doll. I was going to say, when you say lifelike human female, the first thing I thought of was a blow up sex doll. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> you know, there is an inflatable <laughs> sex doll in Fallout 2. As a, really? Yes, and uh, you can also find a, a damaged blow up doll in Fallout oh God. 2. Implying that someone had a little too much fun. Oh dear. Can you use it for anything, like a decoy, or is it a quest item, or is it just a joke uh, that's there? It's a quest item, one of the uh, one of the ghoul characters. Uh, if you remember Set, the ghoul leader from Fallout 1, you meet his son later on. He's like, yeah, I need you to go find a special item for me. A special <laughs> <Yeah>. item? <laughs> now, aside from the Fallout Shelter update video, Bethesda released a second video in the middle of our podcast last Thursday. This was the live-action trailer for the game. Austin, I, yes. you and I both had some strong opinions on this. Uh, why don't you tell me what you think about the way they're marketing this game? Well, first of all, I actually... Okay, so Skyrim had a live action. Generally, I don't care for live action trailers. I think they're neat. Like, it's cool that you made this thing. That's cool that you did a cool thing. We'll put it right up here on the fridge. Uh, but as far as, like, like neat things spectrum... I thought the Skyrim live action trailer was a lot better done and a lot more interesting. It just, I didn't care for the weird, like, style choices they made for it. And I'm not really certain that a live action trailer actually informs anyone about your game or. Do, do they make people want to buy a game? Like, I don't know the data on it, but to me, it doesn't make me. It makes me feel weird. I'm like, this doesn't make me want to play your game. This just. Reminds me of the 90s when they didn't actually have decent graphics and had to use live action stuff to like convince you that like Zelda or that Link was an actual thing that was cool that you wanted to play as because we had to use our imaginations back then. But nowadays it just seems weird when they have live action trailers. It feels like an artifact of an ancient time. Uh, now, right after the game was first announced, I did a, a guest spot on our, our rival podcast, Ham Radio. <laughs> yeah, those bastards. They, they dragged me out of my bed in the middle of the night and made me do it and <laughs> vowed revenge against them. Because we hate those guys at Ham Radio. So anyway, I was on their show right after the game was announced, and we talked a little bit about, you know, what kind of trailer do we hope is going to happen. And way back then, I said, the one thing I hope they don't do is make a trailer that markets this game as you're going to be, you know, this character and you're going to run around with your guns and shoot the monsters. That it, it, for people who don't know what Fallout is like, it, nothing about this trailer implies that you create your own character. Nothing implies that, you know, you can be violent or you can be diplomatic or you can be stealthy or a combination of all of those. And, you know, it just, it, th this trailer gives the sense that it's like, you're Johnny Gunman and you're going to run around with your space gun, <laughs> killing the space mutants with your space dog. And it's like Halo, but there's a German yeah. Shepherd in it. And I think that's so true. Like if you're like, I didn't even think about it from like a, like, cause you'd think that a trailer like this is designed to market specifically to people who have not, or not Fallout fans. And so if they have no context, all they're seeing is like the generic dude bro walking around shooting monsters. Like that doesn't tell you anything. Yeah, so I, you know, in, in terms of, you know, all of us Fallout fans are like, oh, hey, that that's neat because he looks like the thing in the game. Uh, but people who have no idea what Fallout is, they're going to see this and they aren't going to get an idea of what the game is really like. And I think they're trying to 
they're trying to give a false impression of what the game is like so that people who are already going to buy it will be excited about it rather than saying, hey, if you've never heard of Fallout, this is what Fallout is like. So you might like it. And, and I think a lot of my friends who would really like Fallout have seen, you know, some of the marketing for it. And, you know, they're like, oh, it's just another post-apocalyptic, you know, gun shooter game. And they don't really get the sense that, you know, uh, you know, it's more about the role playing and, you know, so a, a good trailer that came out is this morning's luck video where we're, we're recording this at noon on Wednesday. Uh, and so the luck videos came, uh, came out. Uh, this is the last of the special videos. Uh, Austin, uh, what do you think about the luck video? It was neat. I was a little disappointed just because it, it didn't show any of the perks that I actually wanted to know about. It was all like, here are ones that you know are going to be in there already, and uh, here's the, the vaguest hint in the world about one of them, and then the other ones they didn't even talk about. And I'm like, oh, I want to know about the one with the chair. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm sure a lot of viewers have already seen the big perk chart and looked up and down, and the number five perk on luck. <laughs> uh, so for those of you who haven't seen it or are just looking it up now, it, it's it's like a, a, a portly, cross-eyed, confused vault boy. Uh, he's got some kind of motion line behind his head. Uh, and this, I have no idea what this is. Um, Austin, uh, do... Do you, do you have even the vaguest clue about what this is? I have a, I have an idea of what it might be. I think there are a couple of places in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. If you had a really high luck skill, you could just be like, if robots would come to you, be like, what's the password? And you could be like, bumble farts. And they'd be like, password accepted. <laughs> and you had to have a certain luck skill for that. The only thing I can conceive of is that that is some sort of like dumb luck skill where you can just be like flabbity gibbets and get it or like you just bang your hammer on a lock that won't open and it just pops open randomly that's the only thing i can think of but i have no idea what the chair did. why is there a chair there it doesn't make any <laughs> sense all right so, so viewers please sound off on your thoughts of, of what this will be I, I i like austin's uh dumb luck theory that you'll be able to forest gump your way through the world. Um, that, that's a, a build that I've used in some of the older games, and so it'd be great if Bethesda were supporting that. And now the other thing is the Fighting Irish. Uh, there, what the there's F? like a boxing leprechaun, and this is a real high level perk. This is the the level nine perk. And so, you know, we thought maybe, you know, Fighting Irish, you can get like lucky shots when boxing or something or empty handed attacks. But in the video, they address this and, and they use the phrase, the magic of the unexpected. So, I don't understand. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm stumped here. So, viewers, if you have your own crazy thoughts here on on what the uh, uh, the fighting Irish leprechaun boxing high level unexpected magic might be, then um, then let us know what your thoughts are because we're stumped on this. And the, and the last perk on the chart also wasn't talked about in the video, but. I feel like that one, just from the picture, can, there's more of an educated guess to it. Like, it's going to have something to do with... I, I think it's going to operate similar to the dodge ability in agility. Like, where somehow you're you're so lucky that bullets miss you. Kind of like, you know, you everyone around you becomes a stormtrooper. They just can't shoot you because you're just so lucky. Or it's you know, or 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 like that Pulp Fiction scene where they where they get shot at a bunch and then they don't get hit. Like some, it's something like that. That one, that one, I feel pretty confident in. But those, the Fighting Irish and that dumb-looking guy, I have no idea. No idea. And one thing that I love about this video is the fact that they add the Lady Luck as a little fairy in a yes. vault tech uh, fairy princess dress. So cosplayers, <laughs> to your sewing machines. I want to see a bunch of people running around dressed like the Lady Luck Fairy at PAX East up in Boston. You've got a few months now, so get to work on it. Uh, one, one thing I did notice in this was when he's looting, there's a reference to, you know, don't get distracted uh, by your loot because enemies might attack you. So I, I wonder if this means there will be some kind of real-time looting where as you're digging through corpses on the battlefield, it'll be kind of like an MMO game where the battle can still rage around you while you're doing this. Oh, probably. That makes sense. Yeah. Because they, they, Vats no longer pauses the game. 
It does slow things down. I hope, I hope, man, I just, I hope that opening your Pip-Boy still pauses the game, at least to some degree, because I don't like the idea of filtering through my menu and then getting blown up from behind. <laughs> Well, I've always felt like that's a cheat, that if you're in the middle of a combat and you need to loot an enemy corpse and equip all their stuff, yeah. you, you can just do that. It's like, hang on, guys, I'm just going to loot your buddy and take his power armor and his plasma rifle and then fully reload it. And oh, now let's start again. And now to tangent back to the luck video, we saw something at the beginning of this, a giant flying bug thing. Uh, Austin, <laughs> what, what, is this something that we've already seen in the previous games, or is this a new thing? I don't know. I kind of hope it's a giant bloat fly. Like, some sort of the fly monster. Like, I, I've noticed that they, they're leaning towards making basic enemies a little bit more interesting by giving them, like, boss level, like, equivalents. Like, there's the, um, I guess everyone kind of knows now about the, 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 uh, mole rat queen is one. Um, so I'm kind of curious if that's going to be something thematic across the entire game. Like there's going to be the Rad Roach King and and the Bloat Fly Mama Bear or something like that. Oh, we can only hope that it's Cazadors with extra dead ah! poison. All right, so something we've been talking about for uh, each week, uh, getting a little more deranged each week as it happens, is the fact that Fallout 4 has not been announced as going gold yet. We're we're uh, maybe three and a half weeks away from launch now, so uh, I, I'm doing my riot preparation. I've been running around naked in my house, turning over furniture <laughs> and setting things on fire, just just getting prepared. Uh, so Austin, um, what do you think about total panic that it's not gold? What, what if what if they just just never announced that it's gone gold? I mean, that could happen. They're just like, here's your game. We told you it'd be done. Here it is. They're gonna be working right up to the deadline like me on a YouTube video. Yeah, now speaking of working right up to the deadline, instead of making this game gold, Bethesda has been making a bunch of merchandise for us to buy. <laughs> uh, so for those of you who are listening to this but haven't been paying attention to the, the Bethesda store, this week they're doing a huge sale with very limited edition items. Um, and, uh, well, as we record this on Wednesday, they just released the Vault Boy Messenger bags, um, which are almost certainly <laughs> going to be sold out. But each day they're releasing a new super limited edition thing uh, that's going to sell out. And you people in the future listening to this have probably seen something really cool on Thursday that we don't know about yet. I have a personal irresponsible speculation here. We had the live action video that was just, you know, 60 seconds long with a live action guy and some uh, computer CGI compositing. So I think this might have been Bethesda testing the waters for a live action Fallout <laughs> web series or short film. A am I crazy that if they, if they made like 120 times as much as this little one minute video, it, it could be a feature film? Am I nuts? Uh, yeah. You know, and what if they got, if it's not, only if it was cross-promotional with Nuka Break, would it be okay? They need to get some people who know what they're doing in there. Damn it. It would look so cool, though. You know that that's been, they took a ton of money and time to make that trailer, that 60-second trailer. It was probably, like, a several hundred thousand dollar project. <laughs> so I'm not sure they could scale that up to a web series. Then there's my hope that there will be an unofficial pornographic parody of the Fallout series, uh, Pull Out 3, Menage Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hope you would acquire it for 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 your for your documentation purposes. Exactly. That's a little reference to the Storyteller series. Uh, but but uh, you know maybe they can get the guy from this video. If, you know we we haven't seen his face, but perhaps he's you know, incredibly handsome and fills out the vault suit well. And you know they could just cast <laughs> him in a, uh, in a, a pornographic parody that uh, skirts the uh, the copyright laws. And so uh, for those of you who are hoping for that, that that's not terribly insightful. <laughs> what I just said. Maybe we should scratch all that. And continuing on with our speculation of sorts, we have a sort of speculation, really, really, I guess more of an observation, but it is a keen observation from The Skull Gaming on Twitter. He was uh, talking about the uh, one of the original uh, trailers or uh, play spots 
where you see the arm of the protagonist and he says his arm uh, has a wedding ring on it, which is a really nice spot. I didn't really uh, notice that, but I, I like that little detail that, that he's still wearing his wedding ring uh, at some point after leaving the vault. And if you look super close when he raises the Pip-Boy, which is on his left wrist up, you can see that mm -hmm. wedding ring dangling there on the side of the screen. And uh, King Maja from Twitter has an irresponsible or semi-responsible speculation from the Charisma video. And he says that you see the Vault Boy faints after having alcohol and is tied to a pole with nothing on. Could this happen to you? Charles, what do you think? I think it would be really cool if your character drinks too much alcohol or, or uses too much of the wrong can you pass out and will wake up and discover that you've been robbed. If you sleep in an unsecure location, that would be pretty cool. In the previous games, you could only just sleep on certain areas or you could just wait anywhere you wanted to. So this is an interesting idea for a mechanic and I think if they put it in the video, there may be something to it. That the, the penalty for you know chemical abuse or drinking <laughs> too much, there, there's like a real tangible thing where if you do this, you know, in a in a relatively safe location, you'll just wake up and maybe be in a different location. Um, it's a weird mechanic and in a free roaming game it, it might be troublesome if you you know if that happens like during a mission. So I, I'd like to see something like this. Um, Austin, do you think that you know they could work that in in terms of not screwing up a mission from abusing alcohol in the middle of a story based mission? I'm guessing that it's more, um, that if anything, it's a reference to a quest that they're going to put in because that's been really popular the past, like, five or so years, uh, is to put, um, some sort of, uh, the, uh, uh, like, references to the hangover, basically, where you get in a drinking contest with somebody and you black out and you wake up naked. I just, I just beat The Witcher 2 and there's a quest like that in there where you wake up with a naked lady tattooed on your neck and you're naked somewhere and... Skyrim had a quest like that, and I think it's more of a, just a cheeky reference to some sort of drinking contest-based quest that you may have somewhere. Okay, and PSO fan 220 writes, My irresponsible speculation is that Dr. Barrows from Fallout 3 found a cure for ghoulification, and that it will be possible for the sole survival to become a ghoul and to have Dr. Barrows cure it. Now, It's the plot of Morrowind! <laughs> Now, the, the cure for um, ghoulification has been a long-running thing in the Fallout games, actually. In, in Fallout 2, it was really pivotal uh, in the ghoul city of Gecko and Vault City. Then again, in Fallout 3. And so far, none of the games have actually said there is a cure. But one thing that you should uh, keep an eye out for in uh, the perk chart is one of the perks shows a kind of ghoulified character. So hmm. I, I think it is going to be possible that you can become either a ghoul or partially ghoulify, and that the cure for ghoulification might be a quest that you can embark on. Uh, Austin, is this outlandish or reasonable? <sighs> my heart says it's outlandish, but my head... W wait, no, my heart also wants it to be reasonable because I think it'd be so cool to be a ghoul! But no, it's probably ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and now Dr. Barrows, you know, I think if the quest does end up in, Dr. Barrows might come back or it might be another character. But uh, I'm going to contradict Austin here. And I'm going to say, I think Ooh. early stage ghoulification is definitely going to be something that can happen to your character. And I think a reverse ghoulification quest line is going to be a part of it. So, so That'd we'll be see. super cool. But I, I still don't think they'll commit to full ghoulification. Now, although ghoulification is a subject for Ask a Lore Nut, this week our Ask a Lore Nut, no one actually asked us, so we're just going to do it. Uh, we're going to talk about the Fallout timeline and the significance of tomorrow, Friday, October 23rd. Austin, why is that date important? That's the day the bombs dropped. It's the day of the Great War in the Fallout timeline. Of course, much further in the future than now. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's uh, it's a very significant day in Fallout. It's actually one of the few events that I have the date memorized at all times for t October 23rd, 2077. Very important. Uh, you will find in, in Fallout, you'll occasionally um, find 
terminal entries from that day that start out like normal, like, oh, Bob is being such a jerk again at the office, arba arba arba. Oh no, the sirens went off. It's another stupid drill. And then the next like entry will be like a stream of like nonsense letters, like as like as they get you know blasted by radiation and die. Uh, so it's a, it's a it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty important day. It's the uh, according to Fallout Four, uh, as far as we know right now, it's actually the day that you will be playing um, the intro section of Fallout Four on. So it's it's actually a pretty big deal. There's a little bit of dramatic foreshadowing there, where the player knows something the character doesn't. Yes, and we also do a lot of gags with this in the uh, the Fallout lore series. Anytime we do a commercial for a product, it'll always be coming holiday 2077 or <laughs> in theaters Thanksgiving weekend 2077. In fact, um, wasn't there a, there was a, a, a in Fallout 3, I think there was a quest about like a Nuka Cola Quantum going out to be shipped on the 20s, uh, the 23rd or something like that. And so that's why you can't find big caches of it anywhere because it got blown across the wasteland. In the, yes, <laughs> it was sent out to the, the test markets in the period yes. leading up to its big launch. And so, yeah, I, I always love stuff that you read. They're like, yeah, we're preparing to send this out October 30th and, you know, blah. It's like, no, sorry, guys, it's not actually going to happen. Now, something that's particularly interesting about this year's uh, October 23rd is that it comes two days after October 21st, 2015, the day Marty McFly arrives in the future. Ooh. So I, I regret that I will probably have died of old age by the time the real 2077 rolls around. But it's my sincere hope that there are people that uh, look around on October 23rd, 2077, and remember this old game that came out you know, 80 years ago, and uh, and think about, you know, hey, this is the day that the world's supposed to end. So I, I hope that uh, 60 years from now, there's a, a huge, crazy cult of conspiracy theorists <laughs> who really are digging bunkers in their backyard uh, when the real apocalypse comes. So. Uh, those of you who are listening, let's play a joke on the future. And let's just promote the notion that it's really going to happen in the real <laughs> 2077. So tell your children and your grandchildren so that your great-grandchildren, 62 <laughs> years from now, will really live in a panic about this. So, so we, we got and then and then they'll they'll play a retro game of you know for them Fallout. They'll be like, oh no, this game is in on the conspiracy. They know about it. Exactly. So, so, so hen henceforth, after this podcast, though, the whole Fallout fan community, it's one big joke we're playing on future generations. So, shh. <laughs> Who, whoever, you know, like whoever's running, you know, the, the YouTubes of the year 2076, tell the me this. Tubes. So that about wraps up our show for today. But as you, our loyal followers, know, Bethesda is releasing news as you listen to this very podcast. So... We have gotten wise to their wicked ways, and we have devised a way to address their news release problems. We are going to be having this GNN that you're listening to. We're going to continue doing that every week. But on Thursdays, there's going to be an starting next Thursday. There's going to be an, uh, an additional GNN episode that is a live stream on our YouTube channel. Uh, that'll be Thursday afternoons after this podcast is live and y'all have had a general chance to listen to it. We will be covering whatever devious news that Bethesda has tried to sneak past us on our YouTube channel. So you get double the GNN for the same price of nothing. So just to make sure everyone's on the level, we're going to be doing a uh, recorded GNN next week, Thursday, at the usual time. And then we're going to follow that with a live stream where we cover whatever it is that Bethesda secretly released to coincide with our podcast. So so we're uh, we're one-upping them. We're going to force them to, to either start releasing all of their uh, news on Thursday nights at midnight or on Friday. <laughs> uh, or they'll, they'll have just walked right into our, our cunning trap. So. <laughs> and we'll be doing that for the next two Thursdays, uh, right up until the week before Fallout launches. Yes. And thank you for tuning into this week's GNN. I'm your host, Charles Battersby. 
And I'm Austin Horrigan. Tune in every Thursday for new episodes of GNN, along with our new touch-up live stream Thursday afternoons, along with new episodes of Hidden History, The Storyteller, a Fallout lore series, and The Storyteller, Elder Scrolls.